Okay, so Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is way more messed up than I thought it was. So obviously the other kids bully him because he's different. We all know that. But I forgot how ruthless the adults were in this movie. It starts off with his own father fixating on his nose. Like, Rudolph has just been born and all his dad can see is what he thinks is wrong with him. And it even seems like Rudolph and his mother don't really care about the nose, but Donner just isn't having it. Then Santa comes in and says Rudolph can't be on the sleigh team if his nose doesn't change, even though his first impressions of him were that he was sturdy and smart. Santa's more concerned with physical appearance than what Rudolph is capable of, and this isn't the last example of the Santa in this movie being extremely shallow. And Donner doesn't even care. He's like, No, Santa's right. He'll never make the sleigh team. Like, damn, Dad. Thanks for the encouragement. Then he forces Rudolph to wear the false nose for, like, a whole year, even though it... Unbelievable! And then goes on to say that comfort isn't important so long as Rudolph has self-respect, but he clearly doesn't know what self-respect is because he also comments, Santa can't object to you now! Donner only cares about what Santa wants, and that's more important to him than his own damn kid. Am I wrong? Do Santa and Donner not suck in this movie? Let me know in the comments, because honestly, I don't know, man. Okay, so Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is way more messed up than I thought it was. Part 2. So to recap, this poor boy is raised by a buck who cares more about Santa's opinion than his own son. Rudolph is taught that he's not good enough for Santa's crew, and that he's an outcast who needs to change who he is in order to have a place in this world, all at the tender age of zero. So then fast forward to the reindeer school tryouts thing where his nose is revealed and all the kids make fun of him. First, you think the coach is going to break it up and get the other kids off his back. Finally, a real father figure for Rudolph. But no, he just jumps right in and straight up bullies and demeans Rudolph right in front of all of them. He completely isolates him from the other kids, and then Santa shows up again, and he joins in too. And just like in the last video, Santa ignores even his own comments about Rudolph's ability. After being blown away by his nice takeoff, he tells Donner that he should be ashamed of himself for the way Rudolph looks, as if anyone had any control over that or it impacted his performance in any way. Santa is so shallow, and Donner doesn't even stick up for him either, again, just showing his loyalty to Santa over his son. Rudolph has a bad father, and at this point, you can't convince me otherwise. My catchphrase is typically, I don't know, man, but this time, I am sure. Donner sucks. Cancel Donner. <laughs> okay, so Rudolph has some serious trauma. Part 3. Rudolph grows up with a terrible father, blah blah blah, we know that part. He goes to reindeer school and gets kicked out of the games, but it gets so much worse. After they kick him out, they just let him walk off into the forest. Rudolph's parents are right there, and Clarice is the one that goes after him. Like, somebody calls CPS on these fools. And then after Clarice's dad makes her split up with Rudolph, he just leaves town altogether. Like, why does no one have an eye on this literal baby child? The set of scenes where he's in the forest are really sad too, because they give a clear indication of how awful the reindeer really are. None of the other creatures in the forest care about his nose at all. They all sing to him and accept him and reassure him with Clarice. It's literally just the reindeer who are so hateful towards him. Even when he meets Hermie, who has a reason to be fearful of his nose, he still doesn't hate him for it. It's just the reindeer. So the poor guy is basically run out of town, being told he can't do any of the things he wants to with a nose like that, and that he has no place to fit in. Then he goes off on this whole adventure where he almost dies several times, and he literally has to grow up on his own. It just seems like so much to pile on this kid just for having a funky nose, but let me know what you think in the comments, because honestly, I don't know, man. Also, the animation is cursed. Rudolph has trauma, part four. Okay, so Rudolph basically gets run out of Christmas Town and is completely off on his own now. A child in the wilderness, as aren't we all. And on his journey, he meets Hermie and Yukon, who help him survive the horrors of the open Arctic. And in doing so, these two complete strangers are nicer to him than anyone back home. Shortly after, the abominable snow monster traps him at the edge of the ice, and Rudolph thinks they're all gonna die. And what does he do? He blames himself. All he's been taught his whole life is that his nose is the cause of all of his problems. And I know that in this case, his nose is the reason the Bumble saw them, but honestly, it's not Rudolph's fault. The adults in his life had ample time to prepare him for such a scenario, and how he's specifically should learn to deal with it. But all he got was nicknames and teasing. Now, I know you're going to say that Rudolph's dad did teach him to hide from the Bumble, but what he didn't do was look at Rudolph's specific needs and try to find a solution that worked for him. He just tried to make Rudolph like everyone else, and so now he's trying to hide like everyone else, and it's failed him. None of this is on Rudolph. He's been given no choice and zero preparation. And then later, because of this, he decides to leave his friends to try to keep them safe. He believes his nose is such an issue that he needs to sacrifice himself to protect them. This poor, sad, one-year-old child, he is one. Am I reading too much into this? Let me know in the comments, because honestly, I don't know, man. Also, Yukon tries to kill him. Rudolph has trauma, part five. Okay, so Rudolph's out in the wild with his two lovely companions, but he's been made to be so paranoid about his nose, he heads off on his own to keep them safe. So Rudolph heads out on his own and lives alone for several months, literally growing up on his own. And to make matters worse, Sam says, No monster kept him on the run, which means it chased him the entire time. And that's just a lot of stress to put on such a little body. He is two years old now, max. And then in his two-year-old wisdom, he decides it's best to go back home. I think it's very telling that it took Rudolph all this time to decide to go back and face his bullies again. He had to grow up for months before he even thought of going back. It just shows how much trauma he associates with his home. But he does return home, and when he does, everyone is still making fun of him. The first thing they say to him when he gets back is, hey, look who's back! Oh, neon, no. Like, they literally do not care about his well-being at all. He's been gone for months. Santa's only worried about the group that's out looking for him because he needs honor for Christmas Eve, so forget him, he's not their friend. And then Rudolph braves the storm to go to the cave of the Bumble to find and rescue his loved ones. Like, he's become so selfless and brave, but I fear it's all a result of his low self-worth. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments, because honestly, I don't know, man. Also, sexism? This is man's work. 
Okay, Rudolph is dark, part six. So after Rudolph's adventure, he realizes his family's been taken by the Bumble, so he heads to the Bumble's lair to try and save them. He's actually doing pretty well for a while until the Bumble just straight up kills him. Okay, so he doesn't kill him, but the laugh that the Bumble lets out here is actually terrifying. <laughs> So Rudolph's unconscious, and the Bumble is just salivating over everyone, and there's this really dark moment where Clarice is like, Why does he get it over with? Which is a really grim line to have in a children's Christmas movie, because, like, she's left no option but to just wait for death, so that's awful. But anyway, they end up beating the Bumble with the help of Rudolph's friends, and after this, Yukon just straight up yeets himself off a cliff. Rudolph looks over, presumably seeing his mangled corpse at the bottom, because there's nowhere they could have gone, and then he says, Oh, he's gone! But then later this dude just trolls up like, nah, it's all good, I cheated death, Bumble's bounce. And then poor Rudolph's over here just looking like he's seen the ghost of Prospector's past, so there's some extra trauma to add to the pile. And then like five minutes after this, Rudolph's a hero and everything's fine, but we'll get to that later. It's just crazy the degree to which Rudolph's emotions are jumping up and down. It's not good for his poor little heart. I think Hermie should become a therapist instead of a dentist, but let me know what you think in the comments, because honestly, I don't know, man. Rudolph is mistreated, part seven. Okay, so Rudolph gets back to the castle and everyone's finally being nicer to him now that they've heard his story, which is good. It's progress, but it still isn't growth. None of them have changed their opinion opinions on Rudolph. He's just finally been through enough where they don't want to make fun of him anymore. They don't respect him now, they just feel kind of bad, but they're all still shallow in the way that they judge him. Like, Santa only decides to let him on the sleigh team because he realizes he can use Rudolph's nose to get through the storm. Someone who's only ever put Rudolph down is now giving him the praise he so desperately wanted, but it's all just a way to manipulate him to get to his nose. Santa's using him, and it's the same reason that everyone else comes to like him too. He only goes down in history because he was useful to them. They still only see him for his nose. Even Donner reinforces this when he says, I knew that nose would be useful someday, because he thinks it needs to be useful for Rudolph to be treated fairly. And he's even trying to play it off as if he wasn't mean to Rudolph, like he's always liked his nose, which is definitely gaslighting, but it's also so easy to see through because he still doesn't get it. Rudolph has always deserved to be treated fairly, regardless of his nose, but everyone still views him so one-dimensionally. They continue to base his worth solely on how useful it is, and so their kindness to him now is just as shallow as their malice. They act as if they've changed, but I'm not buying it. No, I don't know, man, this time. They all belong in the South Pole, and I think we should send the bumble on them. Peace in, guys. Rudolph is a messed up movie. Part 8. Okay, so Santa might be a sociopath. He's finally found a use for Rudolph's nose, and in letting him lead the sleigh team, it seems as though Santa finally recognizes Rudolph's value. However, we know this isn't true, as he only cares about using his nose, and in trying to maintain this new encouraging facade, Santa says something that lets his true colors shine. As they're taking off, Santa says, Okay, Rudolph, full power! Meaning he's always understood the potential of Rudolph's nose, he just never found a use for it until now, and therefore never wanted to let Rudolph use it. It's essentially saying, let her rip here, so basically, I knew what you could do the whole time, but now you're finally allowed to do it. He's so controlling and manipulative toward Rudolph, putting him down his entire life for having this nose, and then calling it wonderful once it finally suits him. He's basically saying, you can only be one of us under my conditions, and that makes Santa a cult. I think this fills in the blanks for a lot of the other characters as well. They all seem so loyal to Santa, especially Donner, so it's possible their actions don't actually reflect any of their own views, but rather what they think Santa wants. This might be why everyone bases Rudolph's value on his nose. They all love him at the end of the movie, not because they have a use for him, but because Santa does. It's all Santa. It's gotta be. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Am I focusing too much on Santa, or should we just feed him to the elves? Because honestly, at this point, I don't know, man. Peace in. Rudolph is weird, man. Part 9. Okay, so we've established that Santa Land is essentially one big cult with Santa as the leader, but there's one detail I've yet to mention. A crack in the mask of Santa Claus that I think reveals it all. Santa only cares about pushing his agenda. We've seen this before with Rudolph, but he confirms it when he's talking to the misfit toys. As soon as he gets there, he says, Well, let's be on our way. He doesn't even give them the time of day, or night. He doesn't want to hear about any of their trauma, he just wants to get it over with and get back to Christmas Eve. It's almost like he's helping them reluctantly, like he doesn't want to or care to, but then why would he even do it? It's almost as if someone else made him go. But who? Who could have such control over Santa himself? The one who's been controlled everything, except for the one who's controlled him all along. The one who forced him to eat when he was too skinny. The one who made him listen to the elves practice their song even though he didn't want to. The one who's been at his side from the very beginning of the movie. It's Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus made him do it. She's the mastermind behind it all. It's all Mrs. Claus! Okay, so this series has obviously devolved alongside my sanity while making it, but hopefully you get the point that everyone in this movie is just so mean to Rudolph. Santa, Donner, the coach, the other kids, everyone. Why does nobody value this child? Okay, I know this was silly, but let me know what you think in the comments, because honestly, as always, I don't know, man. Peace in, guys.